Welcome back to our video series on the play framework using Scala. In this video, we're going to start getting into what I think is one of the coolest aspects of doing web development with Scala, and it's one of the reasons why I think it's a great language to choose for this. If you go to the main Scala page, and you scroll down a little bit, there's a Scala runs on. Now we've been doing everything for the JVM. The, when we take our Scala code, we compile it, it compiles to Java bytecode, and it runs there. But there are two other platforms that Scala is currently set up to compile for. Uh, one of them is more mature than the other. You'll note this one, the uh, Scala native, is a beta. And while that's a really cool project and I'm really looking forward to it uh, progressing, the one that we want to focus on because we're doing web development is the ability to compile Java to J or Scala to JavaScript. So there's a project called Scala.js, and that's what we're going to, to be talking about. The... The ability to get to write Scala code, to write the code that we that we are familiar with, that is type safe, uh, that helps us find errors earlier, but have it compile to JavaScript so that we can use it on the client. One of the things that has inevitably come across in all of these videos is I'm not a fan of JavaScript. Uh, I find that working with JavaScript makes me a far less productive developer because it takes any little typo you have to go very far into the process to realize that you've made a typo, and, and I'm not a fan of that. So, I really like Scala.js. I like the ability to write Scala and have it come out uh, as JavaScript. In order to make that happen in our project, I put a project inside our project. Now, this isn't really what I'd recommend you doing, but I wanted to keep everything inside of the same Git repository. So there is now a directory called Scala.js only that appears in the Git repository. And it has it is its own project with a build.sbt uh, that is set up for doing uh, Scala.js. Okay. And it starts off with a little main here, and I have this main just printing out a line. The question is, how do we get this? Uh, note that I, when doing this, so if you want to set these things up yourself, the first thing I did was I ran the SBT command to just generate a new basic Scala project. And then I made a few additions that are described in the basic tutorial. So I added a plugin. And so if we were to look at the under project, there is a uh, plugins, and so you can see there's now a Scala.js line in the plugin. I also had to enable the Scala.js plugin and add this parameter, and so those appear inside of here. I enabled the plugin at the end of the root file that was generated, and I put in this line here. I also added one additional dependency, and that is mentioned further down in this page. And we don't, uh, we're not going to, to worry about that yet. Okay, so we have this, and this is Scala code, and I can write other Scala code to this. We could just, uh, we don't have much that we're doing, but actually I guess we could just to show that, that it works for I in one, two, ten, print line I. Okay, something with at least a little bit of logic in there. So we have a, a loop as well. And now I want to have this happen inside of JavaScript. So first thing that I need to do is, now this is the terminal where we've been running our project, our server. We need to go inside of that sub-project, this Scala.js only, and run SBT inside of here. Okay, so we're going to use SBT to compile this. And instead of typing in run, and actually you can type in run, and it will attempt to run your program uh, with Node. I have to admit, I had no interest in, in doing that, uh, but we'll see. Hey, look at that, it actually worked. Uh, so this wound up running inside of Node, which I happen to have installed on, on my computer. If that doesn't work for you because you don't have Node installed, 
don't worry, it's it's not an issue. Most of the time we're going to be doing this for running uh, websites, and so we'll have elements in here that wouldn't run under Node uh, because there isn't a, a DOM or a, or a web page associated with it. One of the things this printed out, though, is that it said it was fast optimizing this. And the command that we are going to run is fastops.js. So there are two commands that Scala.js uses to compile. One is the fastops.js, which completed automatically here because it had just happened up here. There is also, uh, and you can see when this ran, it said it made a file called target Scala 2.12, and then that uh, fastops.js. You can also run full ops JS. Now, generally, this will take longer for our tiny little piece of code, our hello world. It doesn't matter much. This does a more complete level of optimization. And instead of having the file name end in fastop.js, it just ends in opt.js. So that produces a JavaScript file, one that we could theoretically even open and look at because it's here inside of target. Uh, Inside of the Scala, we have these files in here. So what does the fast op look like? Well, it looks like this. And you can see over here, uh, there's a fair bit of boilerplate that the Scala.js brought in. And the names aren't things you'd want to program with. This is a file that should not be edited. You're writing Scala. It's producing JavaScript. The full optimized version is far more compact. Uh, far less human readable. Um, they basically took out all of the white space, but it, they made it have a lot fewer characters. So this works, uh, will load onto websites and, and process more quickly as, as JavaScript. If I actually want to run this, the last thing I have to do, so that produced our JavaScript files, is we need something we can open in the web page. So I created an index.html that uh, you know, standard little thing. I've I've included a header, a div, and a canvas just for some of the examples that we'll want to do. And then I have a script here that is pulling in that file that we just saw. So this will wind up running that file, and the main inside of here will by default get called. And so if we bring back up our web browser, and we actually I can open this in the tab for the SPT. So here in my Scala.js only, there is that index.html. Now it doesn't have anything in it as far as contents go, but if we bring up the developer console, we should see the hello world and the one through 10. Okay, so what you can see here is we have our basic setup for doing things with Scala.js. What we did here wasn't interesting, uh, but we'll come back in the next video and we'll, we'll manipulate the DOM and do some things that are at least a bit more interesting to show you uh, how it works and hopefully give you some incentive for why we'd want to do this through Scala instead of just writing normal JavaScript code.